Hello, I'm Emily Edwards, an intern with Klamath Film, and what you just watched was Priest, a interesting and fun short film in our Northern Shorts category. With us today is the film director, John Garcia. John, Hi. it's nice to finally meet you. You too. Good. The film that you made is 15 minutes long. How long did it take you guys to make this one film? And while making the film, what were your thoughts behind it? All right, cool. Um, so this was a, a one-day shoot. I, uh, we did it. It's like a 10 hour shoot. I try not to do 12s if we can. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there's a lot of people I worked with before I made two features, um, about two, two and a half years ago. And of course, like a lot of people weren't able to shoot during the pandemic. So it was nice to get everyone back together. And we just did this one day, of uh, fun shoot. And I had this idea during the pandemic about a guy who was, um, running from something. We're not quite sure what. And so he ends up uh, in this small town in the Pacific Northwest and, mm -hmm. Uh, he's pretending to be a priest and he finds himself um, at this local church uh, being asked to do exorcisms uh, one after the other. And uh, while doing these exorcisms as a someone pretending to be priests, he, he realizes that he actually has some talent and some, and some ability to be able to like exercise and clear houses and things like that. So I thought it was kind of fun, uh, kind of a fun concept. And I, the, the lead, um, uh, Jimmy Garcia is a friend of mine and actor I trust and had a lot of fun with. And, and so, yeah, we just, we just, we hashed it out and, and, uh, and we created that, that piece uh, in a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. That sounds, was it a lot of work to shoot that whole film and just the 10 hours that you did it in? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like, I think I've gotten better, like just timing, timing things out. And I think I'm just trying to remember who, Maybe, maybe it was like Scorsese was talking about this, like if you watched his masterclass, but sometimes you just, you set a, you set a time allotment, you know, like this is, this is the time from this time to this time that we have to get this scene and, you know, whatever we get, we have to move on, you know, so we mm -hmm. can finish the day on time, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's part of like, that's part of like filmmaking and like something I, I try to, you know, mm -hmm. I think, I'm, I think I'm not as an on time as I think I am, but I try to. I, I kind of pride myself sometimes on, on being like getting it all done and then uh, the, a lot of time that, that, that we have. And so, yeah, we did it like that and, and we ended up getting, getting through it all. And of course, you know, when you shoot something handheld, you know, if ever you want to catch up, if you're behind, um, mm -hmm. you can just switch to handheld and for some reason it just, just all goes a little bit faster rather than, um, you know, um, more uh but it's a choice it's, it's it's an artistic choice too right you don't just want to do it for, for no reason but i mean i think the the piece itself lent itself to that anyway so it was uh so we were able to shoot and get what we needed in mm -hmm. and in that time period mm -hmm. <laughs> the storyline of the film is very interesting and at the end the story really pulls itself together um when i first watched the film i asked myself what was happening at like, because at the beginning, it started with the two guys talking, and then all of a sudden, he's walked out of house to do an exorcism. And then mm -hmm. um, he, uh, at first, I thought he was just crazy <laughs> and just like chanting a bunch of stuff at first. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it, I got a great kick out of it. It was really fun to watch that. Cool. And then when he got back to the house, um, when that other guy, he called a friend confronted him about not being about part of the church that's when i started to understand the storyline better better mm -hmm. was there like um a wit reason that it felt like kind of jumpy at some parts like you had to be invested in the film to understand it yeah i think you had to be invested in in the film to really to really understand like the you know the 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 narratives that that's kind of you know smashed in the middle of of that of that conversation mm -hmm. and part of that was like budgetary and and part of, and and creative you know like how can we tell a tell a story in a day and mm -hmm. um and also you know leave like the audience like asking questions um at the end you know and sometimes like that's i feel like that's a way to as long as they you know if they walk away you know, trying to piece it together in their mind, they're still thinking about it. And so I was like, well, at the end, like the, you know, the purpose was just to, for people to be able to um, kind of take their own idea of what's happening. You know, is he, is he, is he actually, you know, 
you know, you know, is he going to do? Is is he actually? Can he actually do this, or is he is he a fraud? But I mean, but the but the human connection at the at the end, I think, is what makes it come together. That that uh, these two men are are connecting on a level. You know, one of them, you know, the the uh, um, you know, the the actor Alan, you know, opposite of Jimmy, you know, has just had a loss of a, of, of some kind. He lost his wife, uh, um, and Jimmy's been there. He's been there for him. You know, uh, the priest and. Uh, and so I, you know, I think what we learn and, you know, and scene, I'm also an actor, but what you learn in scene work is that, um, at the end of the scene there, a connection is made and that's when the scene's over, you know, mm-hmm. and that can, that can mean a lot of things. And so for these two men are connecting and, uh, and so what I, what I hope people will get is like, whether or not, uh, he's a priest or not, he's, he's present and he's there and he's going to, to try and do what he can. So he's a good person to help anyone that needs it. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's, it's something like that. Yeah. That throughout all the bullshit and all the fraud or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call him, uh, he, there's, there's a person, there's a human in there, you know, mm-hmm. there's a good, there's a person with a conscience and, and I think he does have the need to help, to help people regardless of, uh, what he's going through or what he's running from. Mm-hmm. And we don't know if what he's running from is something that's, you know, it's his fault or not, or, you know, we don't know, we don't know what to believe. And that's part of the, that's part of the mystery that, that I think might draw, hopefully draws people in. It leaves people thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. John, this question is a, like specifically towards you since you are the writer of the film. Mm-hmm. Um, what gave you the idea to write a storyline like this? I think being in Texas during the pandemic, just, uh, well, I took, a, I've taken several ideas I had or, or like Texas originated ideas mm-hmm. and then took them to the Northwest and it just sort of colored them a lot differently. I made this prison movie, um, named lose a couple mm-hmm. years ago and that was it's supposed to be Texas. There's no, there's no evergreens in Texas. Mm-hmm. There's no Mount hood in Texas, you know, but you know, <laughs> Texas, you know, I don't know. It's just, yeah. uh, it's just kind of, yeah, it's just kind of how he chose to 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 create a sense of uh, a sense of place, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When writing uh, storylines for films and stuff, do you take um, a lot of like your surroundings and put them into the film itself? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was like listening to Quentin, Quentin Tarantino talk about this the other day, whether you like him or not, but he was saying like, yeah, if he's going through a breakup or something like that's, mm-hmm. that's going in the movie, you know? And I think that's like a, I can go back and watch all my films and this is, I'm working on my 11th feature right now. And I can kind of, I kind of tell like where I was sort of, uh, um, you know, just where I was like, you know, mentally or, you know, psychologically or whatever, physically or anything. Uh, when I watch those movies, I, I'm, I'm reminded, you know, so yeah, I think uh, that's what makes them, you know, connective, and that's what makes people be able to 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 um, you know, to like they can confide, relate to the story, confide and, and relate to your story. You know, those human elements that they can relate to, those like moments between moments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did you go about finding the actors for the film, and what were you looking for when you were looking for the actors? Yeah, for shorts, I sometimes, I mean, I think shorts are an opportunity to try new things. Mm-hmm. work with actors you haven't worked with um and so i mean i did a mix of that but also um worked with some people that i know know and and love and mm-hmm. and uh and i put before and i know they can you know totally um uh, get the job done but um mm-hmm. in one sense uh lacy you know who plays um one of the uh you know, like the housewife i guess you know uh she was our producer you know and and uh of uh the last two features i made but she's also talented actress and i wanted to work with her in that way and then uh you know her scene partner jake you know uh uh, was uh, somebody i'd heard of and had seen in another movie and it was nice to work with him and uh and alan i worked with who was playing opposite of jimmy you know the guy at the table i i worked i worked with him uh in a movie i did a few years back and it's just you know i just knew that these people could could uh could could get it done you know um and so yeah yeah that's i i'd worked with uh I'd worked with um, two of them before, and but two of them I hadn't worked with in this way. So, yeah, and that was ni- it was nice. It was nice to learn how people work, and mm-hmm. you know, you, you kind of have to approach you know e- e- each actor, 
each actor differently, you know, and I have, they have to learn how to trust you and likewise. And by the end of the day, I felt like everybody was on, was on target. And I think also when you're doing, it was supposed to, you know, like mm -hmm. Priest is supposed to be funny and it's supposed to be comedy, you know, whether, whether or not people laugh or not. I mean, I, who knows, you know, but, but, um, but like, you know, like some of that's like kind of keeping the ball up in the air on set, you know, like, like the keeping the energy, the energy up on set. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, this should, you know, if you make, you know, there's a couple of times we, you know, we're trying not to laugh. And that's, I think, you know, that's, uh, I've had a problem, like, I had problems with that in the past. Um, when I've made stuff that's like funny, you know, uh, trying to, <laughs> trying to not laugh, you know, while yeah. stuff's happening. Anyway. I did laugh at the part where, um, the priest was trying to exercise the house. I thought <laughs> that was very funny. Good. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a good comedic actor. He's good. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. really, really good. So yeah, yeah. I, I was talking to somebody about it because I, I make mostly dramas, but the, uh -huh. you know, I think um, I think like you know the way I heard it is like every you know drama needs the levity of comedy, or it doesn't or it doesn't work, or it turns into melodrama. It can fall flat in its face. So mm -hmm. I try to remember that and uh, put some levity in wherever I can. Yeah, he did a very good job. He was very invested. I could tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just how he is. That's just how he is. Yeah. The first time I met him. Uh, on set he came to, he came to set on in character mm -hmm. and uh i said it wasn't really talking to, to jimmy for the whole shoot sometimes i'd be like am i talking am i who am i talking to right now i don't know it's kind mm -hmm. of kind of interesting it's, it's method did mm -hmm. you have to do any location scouting at, for your film at all no no we just you know we had a friend offer up the location and we just we just did it you we just, just took it, it yeah yeah i mean we took it because, uh, you know, the house is big enough. We can have departments and, mm -hmm. and each, you know, it's a thing. We were going to shoot in another house, but there's, mm -hmm. you really want a place for like, you know, wardrobe to be able to set up and, you know, your uh, camera department to be able to set up and, you know, indoors and preferably, especially, you know, when the weather that we're having during that time. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We choose locations based on so many, so many different reasons. And sometimes, you know, there might've been a better location, but it, it was too um was too small and so uh that that one worked out just great and i've actually shot two other two other films there mm -hmm. it's uh, been great so for the house that you shot in did you use different parts of the house for the whole film mm -hmm. yeah it's all shot it's all shot there and we just used yeah we used different parts of the house to you know to film in that's really impressive i was surprised i thought you used more than one <laughs> actually Oh no no yeah it's all it's all shot all shot in one yeah I try to try to do that as much as I can you know but it's a funny thing like uh, I had some friends that just got back from Cannes mm -hmm. and uh, and like you know I guess like the what a lot of people were saying is like oh, okay like there's so many like chamber dramas chamber horror films you know like all mm -hmm. shot in one location et cetera et cetera et cetera you know that made during the pandemic or quickly after the pandemic or just sort of just uh there's a lot of that right now you know and uh, you know, you know, I'll I'll watch I'll watch those. I've made I've made a, a chamber drama feature film before, you know, but uh, but it's um, you know, I think the like the like like the, the desire to uh, have films that are, you know, you want to you want to feel like you're in a world, and it's hard mm -hmm. to feel like that if you're in one location the whole time, you know, or unless it's like you know you're supposed to be stuck in this basement with them, you know, like in mm -hmm. Saw or something like that, you know, it's different, it's different, but. It's just interesting, yeah. And trying to make one location work and be, you know, work as several, you know, or just make it seem interesting. You know, that the the one movie I made that was all took place pretty much in one in one room and mm -hmm. uh, in a bedroom, and it just you know, for, it's an hour and a half long, and so I just I think we pretty much rotated um, like clockwise, you know, uh -huh. and then, and then rotated back, you know, throughout you know throughout the whole the whole feature and just just tried not to shoot the same scene twice and it ended up like holding up you know so that movie's doing pretty well you know for mm -hmm. all being shot in one little room yeah it's interesting do you think uh when you when you film in one location do you think that definitely has to use a lot of like creativity to use the space around you yeah 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 i think yeah i think you just need to think about what you know um well, you know what the audience is seeing and like you know like how you know like i always hear like you know how do you want the audience to feel and that should that should determine your you know the camera your camera work and what the the angle and the and the focal length and all that stuff you know like what do you want them to feel and so i try to keep that in mind 
and and um in addition to that like what's you know aesthetically pleasing what is and what works for this one for this one moment between these mm-hmm. these characters and so yeah be, being aware of like you know for me my rule was like i wouldn't re- repeat the same uh the same uh setup um for for all the scenes they would be mm-hmm. different yeah and that's so they're smoothing around the room or whatever you know so i think it worked mm-hmm. what do you think is the was the hardest part of the filming process and what was the easiest part um, I think the hardest part was uh, directing and shooting this thing mm-hmm. myself. I think that was, I mean, I've done that before. You know, I've shot, I shot two or three of my features. And uh, mm-hmm. and after a while, you get into the hang of it. You know, it takes a few days. And after a few days, you're like, you get the hang of it. Mm-hmm. And so, and so that's, been, that's been something. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was kind of the hardest part. And then I guess the easiest part was just that I'd worked with people before. Mm-hmm. And so that it, it seemed pretty streamlined, you know, that I, that I could, uh, that I could do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I heard that you were making an, a feature film at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, would it be all right if you could tell us a little bit about the film? Sure. Yeah. Making? Totally. Yeah. It's called the Bigfoot project. Mm-hmm. It's, it's about a, it's about a cult that manifests big, Bigfoot from the forest every uh, blue moon. Mm-hmm. And a couple that moves uh, that moves next door to them, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's what that's it's about. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got like a we got a suit from the movie Exists mm-hmm. um, from uh, about uh, 2014. It's a really really great suit. We have a, good, a excellent Bigfoot. It's uh, it's mostly Latino cast. You know, kind of mm-hmm. like Lose, my last film, with two Latino leads, um, two Latin leads rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really excited about the, you know, diversity aspect as well as like, you know, a genre film, like, you know, a creature feature, like a Bigfoot movie, Mm -hmm. Um, as well as the, you know, the, the cult aspect of it, you know, it's pretty cool. And, um, you know, we know like a movie like this, you know, um, can't take itself too seriously, you know, or, you know, we'll lose some people. So we're keeping that in mind, trying to keep it, you know, aware of itself and kind of keeping it kind of, kind of fun, but scary at the same time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm really, really excited. But we start in two weeks. And so this is go time right now. Like mm-hmm. there's we're all here scheduling right now. So I, I gotta go in a sec, but it's really right. it's it's really fun times. Do you have anything else you would like to say about priest? Um just that I mean, surprisingly, I it just that the film surprised me. Like when we got done and, and we did the thing and put it together, it was just one of these things. I I I wondered like, will this work? Can, can it work? And uh, you know, um and I think and like I said, you know, at the end, um, there was a connection and that's, you know, that's, um, that's what it needed, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that human, the humanistic quality. And I think, uh, because we have it, I think it, I think it does work and it allows us to kind of dream and sort of like kind of wonder and think about what, what would happen next. And that mm-hmm. that's, that's what you should do. And, and something like it abbreviated, like a short or a pilot or, or whatever you know if we had more time more than one day we could have made it even you know more extensive and Mm -hmm. but i'm really happy with what we got so i hope people enjoy it hey thank you so much john for being part of the klamath independent film festival priest will stream sunday september 18th at 12.03 p.m in our northern shorts category all right thank you thank you so much